My name is Connie Armstrong and I serve as the Executive Director for the Oklahoma Center for the Book in the Oklahoma Department of Libraries. Joining me today is David Jennings. David is a native Oklahoman. He is a practicing physician in Broken Arrow, but he is also an award-winning poet and photographer. David is here to discuss his book, The Smallest Hint, Photographs and Poems, which won the 2023 Oklahoma Book Award for Photography. David, thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much. David, uh, just to get us started uh, for our audience, give us a brief summary of your book, The Smallest Hint. Yeah, it um, is a collection of original photographs and poems, uh, 33 paired photographs and poems um, that I started working on a few years ago and saw it uh, come to publication uh, September of last year. So, uh, what was your inspiration to do the book? Yeah, uh, to try and make it a somewhat short answer, I've got probably a couple couple ways to describe it. Um, the first being, I've got a 12-year-old daughter uh, who loves to write. And um, so a few years back, as she was writing stories, she would have been eight or nine years old. Um, she asked me at one point, you know, do you think I could ever write a story or write a book and get it published. Uh, and I said, sure, you know, try to tell her you can do anything you put your mind to. Um, and it kind of planted a seed uh, or maybe, you know, sprouted a seed that was already in me that I had been a writer off and on since I was in college uh, back in the 90s, early 90s, um, and had never, you know, worked to put the collection together and that that kind of started me thinking about putting a collection of poems together. Uh, I had also gotten into photography and so that had become an inspiration for much of my writing was what came in the photographs. Um, the last part of that answer though to your question, um, I put this collection together in its in a very um, basic form as a gift to give to my mother, um, who was in her 90s and um, was starting to have some struggles, you know, with her health. And so I, she had always graciously been a fan of my photographs and also my writing. And so I um, just ordered a collection of probably 30 of these poems and photographs through one of the printing companies, I think it was Impix, but, but a printing company where you can order your own book of uh, photographs and uh, gave it to her, I think, for Mother's Day of the year before she passed. Um, so she got a, a, a form of this book as well, but it that led to me kind of refining it and submitting it um, in hopes of publication. Oh, that's a, that's a wonderful story. Now, earlier you stated that this is a compilation of 33 original photographs and verse that was inspired by those photographs. So explain how you do that process, explain the process of how you bring words to those images. Yeah, I love it. And I don't think I can explain it. Okay. <laughs> uh, but it's, but it's something uh, I've just grown to, to enjoy doing. Uh, so the process that I actually follow uh, most mornings when I'm going to write, I get up early because I, I am working also, but I get up anywhere from 4.30 to five o'clock. Um, and I'll sit with a photograph that I may decide that morning that I want to work with, uh, or I may have, you know, for some reason or another, I may have gone to bed even with a particular photograph or image in my mind that I plan to work with that, uh, that day. And uh, so I'll sit, you know, several mornings of a week with a photo and um, sometimes what is written comes out in one setting and um, and I'm thankful for it. Other times I may get three or four lines or five or six lines and have to come back to it later in the day or in the evening or the next morning. Um, and then likewise on the weekends when I can I get up early and have my coffee and if the weather's nice sit on the back porch and do the same. But um, basically it's sitting with an image and waiting for the first few lines to to come to me and if they um, if they start to work out then the rest of the poem kind of follows suit. 
the last stanza of the last poem in the book reads, of all the things you could have done, you spent your day with me, disclosing but the smallest hint of vast eternity. Explain what you mean by these words and why did you choose that particular poem to end the book? Um, I, I think I chose it to be the end of the book and it's obviously shares the title mm -hmm. um, of the book and its words. Um, because I really feel like it, it, even with what I continue to do now, working with photography and writing, um, I, I do feel strongly that we, we are made as creators and we were created by a great creator. And, and we may not all be artists or best-selling artists, what have you, but I think we're all creative. Um, that particular poem is paired with a photograph that uh, I took at one of my favorite places to go to quickly if there looks like there's going to be a nice sunset. Um, so a lot of times, you know, if, if time allows and I see clouds are going to set up in the west and the sun's starting to look the right way, you can kind of anticipate that a sunset's going to be one of our prettier ones that we have in Oklahoma. And uh, so I have a few places close to my house, which is in South Broken Arrow, that I can get in the car. Usually if my daughter's agreeable, I'll grab her and bring her along and we'll go and shoot the sunset. So this particular uh, photograph with this poem was taken in South Broken Arrow, really bordering Bixby. And it has one of our beautiful sunsets, but silhouetted, silhouetted in the photo is uh, someone's house. And I don't know whose it is, it's a small farmhouse. But, um, but I love the way that it looks, you know, with the sunset. And when I wrote the poem, I kind of put myself in that house and put myself at the end of a day and kind of went through my thoughts of, you know, we're fortunate enough that we can have a God who's with us, spends time with us, and has all the busyness of keeping this planet going and everything that, uh, that God is responsible for. But if you look personally, you can have, you know, all the time you want with him. So, so I wrote the poem kind of from the standpoint of realizing that you can spend the day with God and he'll show you things as simple as uh, flowers in a field, um, you know, what have you, that are miracles and, and beauty that we have all around. Um, and that those are just a hint of, of things to come, you know, in heaven. So that, that's the kind of the crux of that poem and the, the gist of it. I love that. Um, now, I stated earlier in the intro that you're a native Oklahoman born and bred. So how does being from Oklahoma impact your photography and your poetry? Yeah, I, I uh, don't know that, in, that it intentionally does or would, but, I, but looking at what I've photographed and so forth, obviously it does. Um, the landscape in Oklahoma, some of the photographs that I take, you know, they're, nothing is, is um, outstanding as far as um, they're pretty simple, but I, I enjoy getting out and photographing even just a, a field at sunset, or I like to get something like, you know, barbed wire coming to a corner post with the sunset to, to be behind it. Um, I oftentimes will bring my camera and leave it in the car when I go to work uh, so that I can have it on my way home. That's where lots of my images have come from. Um, one of my favorite one of my personal favorite images that I've taken, it, I took after work in Muskogee or just outside Muskogee, and it is of uh, a windmill. And it just happened that that afternoon we were getting those uh, big cumulonimbus clouds that, that boil up before a storm. And so they had blossomed up and I found this um, windmill and the windmill was falling apart. And it's in the, it's in the smallest hint. Um, but some of the blades had come off. There was even a blade, I think, stuck down in the frame of the windmill. And uh, that's a perfect Oklahoma image. <laughs> uh, I grew up in Claremore and train tracks, if you're familiar with Claremore at all, train tracks are a part of it. And, and I, I love to get out and shoot train tracks. And um, yeah, there's a lot of beauty in and around Oklahoma that's, uh, that's great to capture. Yeah. You mentioned the enjoyment that you receive. Is that your uh, motivation to create photography and poetry? Just the enjoyment of it or what else mo might motivate you? No, that's, I mean, really that's it. I, um, 
I, I can't explain necessarily where the interest comes from. I was an English major years and years ago, uh, was going to teach English, and that has stayed in my, in me, I guess. And so um, I, I love the process of getting out. I, you know, if I've got a couple hours on a weekend, I love to get out with the camera and uh, just go see what I can find kind of uh, with no plan. Um, likewise, yeah, to me, it's kind of play to start out in the morning with the mystery of what might or might not come in words that will pair with the photograph I've got. You know, sometimes I've got an, an idea. I, I don't think I ever go into writing with an agenda of what I'm trying to say, or maybe sometimes, but a lot of times it's a feeling uh, around a particular photograph that, that, I, that I know is you know is there but uh but i'm but i don't know what the words are going to be and so i just yeah to me it's play to get those first few lines um i'm fairly formal i like rhyme and meter mm -hmm. and so i think it's kind of play to me to get those first few lines not knowing what you know your your accent count is going to be across the line or what the rhymes are going to be or the rhyme scheme but uh, to me it's play to find out how that all works itself out. And oftentimes in one setting um, where you can finish writing a poem and look back at it and say, I don't even know where that came from. Um, but, but I love the creative mystery of that, so. So do you pursue any themes in your photography or is it? No, not really, I don't think. I mean, uh, you know, no, usually I get out and see what I can find. Um, I do uh, tend to gravitate towards some things that other people probably scratch their heads, but uh, there's so much detail in and around us if we stop to look, and I think a lot of times we don't, but that's one thing I learned with the camera was that it can help you to stop um, and look at things um, from a different angle and even look at things on a more microscopic level, so to speak, and so I I'll get out and find myself, you know, photographing a doorknob uh, on an old building or photographing the bottom of the door of an old building or uh, steps or a vacant house or, or old flower bed by a house. And um, so I, I don't know that I have themes, but kind of, uh, I guess I gravitate toward those uh, simple, but oftentimes overlooked things that are all around us. So, it sounds more like your photography is more organic, that it, you just accept it as, it as it comes. But in your creative process, do you, do you go out ever with an image in mind or where you've researched a subject and that's what you're trying to find out there? Um, rarely, but, but, I, but I do sometimes. Mostly it is organic. Uh, I uh, kind of serendipitously ended up um, being contacted by someone who's now a friend and a photographer named Joe Henderson, who's an excellent photographer, and he a uh, Navy veteran and uh, just a great, a great guy, but uh, he lives in Dallas now, and once in a while we get together, and, and he, either I'll contact him or he'll contact me, and he'll, you know, I'm going to be in town, and do you want to get out and try and get a, some sunset or sunrise pictures, usually sunrise with Joe, and we'll go out and see what we can find. And we've picked towns that we've never been to before in and around Oklahoma and just get there early and um, let the morning unfold and see what we can find to photograph. Um, but I have, you know, rarely gone out with, with uh, an image in mind or something I wanted to accomplish. I think one example um, is a, a use of a statue that I've used in several images and actually in a few poems of the same the same statue, but the uh, sculptor in Broken Arrow who recently passed, uh, David Nunnally, but he's an internationally known sculptor that we've been blessed to have here in Oklahoma. Uh, he's got um, a statue in the Veterans um, Park in Broken Arrow of a United States soldier. Uh, and I was fortunate enough uh, on one occasion to get out at sunset and the clouds were beautiful. Uh, and I got behind the soldier and captured kind of solar flare coming through uh, the crevice of the soldier's arm where it was by his side. Uh, 
Um, and it's one of my favorite images and kind of feel blessed that the statues there and I've uh, paired it with a couple of writings that I've done. Um, it's, it's going to be in a book that's, that's currently under contract to publish hopefully later this year. Uh, but I'm very grateful to, to him. I never got to meet him, but I'm grateful for his, um, for his work, beautiful work. Very good. Um, so you've been a photographer for a while now. Tell us um, how, how your work has evolved over time. Obviously, the technology has evolved from the old 35 millimeter setups to the digital age, but your photography, has it evolved any over time? Um, it has to have, and I'm still hesitant for to be referred to as a photographer uh, because I'm very much self-taught and uh, I kind of learn on the fly. And if things turn out uh, that they look nice, I feel like it's a great accident. <laughs> um, so, but I enjoy it. Uh, yeah, I, I started taking photographs, got my first, what I would say, real camera as opposed to kind of a point and shoot, but I bought a Canon pretty basic Canon camera when our daughter was born or shortly after so that we could catch some pictures of her. Um, and as I uh, started taking pictures and learning the camera, I uh, started reading about photography. And so my, my photography and kind of, I would say the art of photography kind of evolved over time um, as I got to know the camera better. And certainly the, I, I shoot with a mirrorless Fuji camera now. Uh, and I love that you can make adjustments on the camera and go out and what you see, you know, in your in your lens or in your viewfinder is what you're going to get in your image. And so you can make adjustments right on the fly and hopefully not have to do a lot of post editing uh, in Lightroom, although I, I do that some. But um, a neat little story that I might throw in. <clears throat> uh, when I was reading and trying to learn how to take photographs. Uh, I pulled a book off the shelf at Barnes and Noble uh, by an author named Chris Orwig, who's again, a best-selling author and a teacher of photography. He's a Sony uh, artisan photographer. So he's very well known. I didn't know him at the time, but I came to know him and his work, you know, remotely. And uh, he had a book uh, that was called Visual Poetry. And it really didn't have anything to do with poetry, but the but the title caught my eye and I pulled it off the shelf and bought it and read it cover to cover and have read it several times since cover to cover. Um, and this is very inspirational uh, in taking photographs that are not usual, you know, and it talks about the kind of introducing the art of photography and taking different angles and so forth. Um, but the tail end to that story is that as my book, The Smallest Hint was, was in the publishing pre-publication phase, I uh, reached out to this author um, who I've never met uh, through Facebook Messenger um, <laughs> and kind of figured I would never hear from him, uh, kind of figured it would go to a trash heap. Um, but not long after he wrote back and said that he would be happy to see an advanced copy of the book. I told him he was an inspiration to me and so forth. Uh, and long story short, he ended up giving a blurb that's on the back cover of my of my book. So I'm ever grateful to him for that and feel honored that he took the time to do so. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you're a practicing physician, so you have a full-time job. How do you make time for your photography and your poetry? Are you disciplined in that you carve out certain hours out of each day? How does that work? Yeah, that's, uh, and I don't every day. I wish I did. Uh, I do try to be disciplined. I, I have over time kind of come to feel like the creative uh, gift will come if you have a habit. And I almost feel like it kind of waits for you if you develop that habit. Um, so my, my habit has been, um, you know, at least probably three, if not probably three days out of the work week, I'll get up 4.30 or 4.45-ish and get my coffee and sit down with my uh, computer with a, with an image and and try to work that way. Um, so I find a couple of hours in the morning before I start to get ready for uh, work. Um, and then on the weekend, I'll get up early, either Saturday morning or get a couple hours in before church. I love to, you know, if the weather's nice, I love to sit 
on the back porch at my house uh, with my computer and see what comes of it. I um, I lost my mom last year in February, and I was um, blessed enough to inherit her porch swing from her porch. Uh, and so I love to sit in that swing uh, and sometimes feel like I work better there. Awesome. That's an awesome story. Um, for the person who picks up the smallest hint and looks at the images and reads the poetry, what would you like that person to take away? From your book. Well, hopefully, I don't know how many people read um, much poetry anymore. So, I I hope maybe if someone does pick up the book that you know it's approachable. I feel like um, a lot of my writing, as I mentioned earlier, is kind of formal and it it fits uh, fits a mold, so to speak. So there's not a lot of um, investigation behind it to figure out what it means it kind of says what it means and I hope that it maybe interests people to read a little bit more and investigate other writers and um, maybe read a bit more poetry and um, I guess on the bigger scale uh, I, I hope it shows a little bit of my gratitude to God for being able to write being able to see some beauty in the world around us and maybe that um, maybe that helps some other people to do so as well. What advice would you give anyone aspiring to be a photographer or a poet? Well, uh, photography, I would say probably a lot of people know more than I do, uh, but advice would be to get out and shoot. Uh, we're, we're fortunate enough nowadays that we don't have to look at how many exposures we have left on our film. And, you know, you can go out with a, with a memory card in your camera and shoot as many as you want to and you can go back and erase all you want to um, so getting out and shooting is a great way to become more creative get familiar with your camera and make mistakes you learn from your mistakes and uh, grow from them as far as writing um, you know I, I enjoy it so it's it it's not a doesn't feel like a chore to me it's something that I look forward to if I've got something in my head and I'm or I know I'm going to work with a particular photo uh, I, I look forward to getting up early and getting the coffee going so that I can see what happens. I would say to someone who's wanting to write, uh, the biggest thing is to read, kind of find what your interest is or your, your niche might be and read an awful lot in that genre. Um, and then make a disciplined schedule for, for writing that you stick to as best you can. And I think that uh, you'll start to see productivity um, naturally come that way. Um, I feel a busy person, obviously, uh, but do you read for fun? And if so, are you currently reading anything right now? Uh, I do, and I am. Um, I don't read a lot of fiction, although I, when I was an English major, of course, you read mm -hmm. ad nauseum, and so and I enjoyed it, but you also usually had to, to write papers and so that it wasn't purely for pleasure then. Um, back then, uh, one of my favorites was Fal William Faulkner. Um, and so I have read and reread several of his novels um, anymore. I have a 30 minute commute. Uh, and so I've read several of his books on audiobook um, and have enjoyed kind of going back over things I've read years ago. Um, so I, I kind of feel like I'm a nerd as far as reading goes. I don't read a lot of current, I don't, as far as poetry goes, I don't really read much current poetry. I'm not familiar with current writers very much. I am to some extent, um, but uh, I have several copies of different writers' works of poetry around the house that I keep on different places and I'll pick up and read. Um, currently, specifically, I'm reading a, book that I don't think is on anyone else's summer readings list. <laughs> but uh, in the 1960s, uh, Lawrence Thompson was the official biographer for Fro Robert Frost. And I've read other works on Frost and he's, I think my favorite writer, my favorite poet. And uh, his life fascinates me, his writing fa fascinates me. Um, but I'd never read his official biography, which is a three volume um, biography written by Lawrence Thompson and so I'm 200 and something pages into the early years right now so uh, 
that's what I'm reading now. That's cool. You mentioned earlier there's a new book project in the works. Can you expand on that a little bit? Do you have a title yet, or what's the book about? I do. Uh, it is the title is Someday Somewhere, and it comes from a poem in the in the book. Uh, it evolved the same way that the smallest hint evolved. I just have kept writing and kept uh, photographing, and so. Um, but it's a collection of uh, it's going to be 68 paired photographs and poems. Um, and it is under contract as of about a week ago. And so uh, I don't know exactly the time frame on it, but I hope it'll be later this, maybe in the fall, uh, that I'll see it coming out. But um, yeah, it's more of the same um, photographs and poetry. The um, title of this collection comes from a photograph and poem um, that was taken at sunset that silhouetted uh, my daughter, who's now 12. Uh, but the poem, the title poem of the book, if you will, uh, kind of talks about when she's older, uh, hoping that she'll look back and have good memories of going out and spending time shooting sunsets with me. So that, that is so sweet. Um, for people wanting to know more about you and your photography and poems, <clears throat> how can they follow you? Do you have a website or social media outlets? Yeah, I'm on uh, social media, Facebook. Um, I have a website that's a long one, but it's David Jennings in art and photography.com. So it's a mouthful, uh, but that's my website. Um, I update publications and um, book signings. I've tried to kind of stay active in and around the Tulsa area with some book signings and getting the smallest hint out um, to the public. So I'll keep it updated with the upcoming new book and so forth. Okay. Again, the title of the book is The Smallest Hint, Photographs and Poems, which won the 2023 Oklahoma Book Award for Photography. David, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Connie. I appreciate it.